Excuse me, little dog. My guys. It is a lovely autumn night here in the fall of 2024 and the collapse of everything. Starting my final week at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Uh, wrapping up another summer. What I've been going through, I don't have to repeat that. You can hear that story elsewhere, how my day is gone and the collapse of everything. But it is now Sunday, October 20th, 2024. And uh, sitting here, what are we going to rant about on a Sunday night? So I have it narrowed down to three choices here. Do we want to start out in the shithole a uh, country of Cuba, where I guess the power, the national power grid went down a few days ago. What happens when a country goes too long with electricity? Death and devastation follow. And uh, anyway, but let's give that one a few more days, all right? We're going to give the collapse of the grid in Cuba a few more days. And then, of course, here we go again from the, uh, you know, one of the biggest shithole countries on the planet. The poster child of, uh, of the collapse of everything. <clears throat> from BBC News out of Nigeria... My nephews died in tanker blast trying to stop petrol scoopers. Yes. Uh, you know, this is this latest one where, you know, the tanker, the, the oil tanker, uh, turns over in one of these third world hell holes and all of these clueless fucking morons uh, start grabbing buckets uh, to, to start scooping up the free gas and, and the thing blows up. How many are dead? Uh, the, the explosion, the, the latest, uh, the latest uh, gasoline truck explosion has so far claimed the lives of at least 170 people, many burned beyond recognition, a hundred more people in the hospital waiting around to die. Uh, tanker was full of petrol, blah, blah, blah. When, when residents realized there was free petrol to be had, otherwise known as gasoline, people rushed to get buckets and other receptacles to collect the precious liquid. Many residents did not want to give up the opportunity to stock up, ignoring the warnings Anyway, I think we've heard uh, the the uh, exploding petrol truck in a uh, Nigeria story enough times. So, uh, guys, I honestly don't know if uh, Medium.com, if the single greatest satirist uh, I have ever read on Medium.com has arrived on the scene. Don't read a lot of satire on Medium.com. Of course, I have uh, I, I have tried to publish some satire, and it, 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 people that just don't get satire. So the best satire, of course, is when you when you don't know if what you are reading is satire or not. Uh, you're reading this thing, uh, okay, nobody can be this clueless. The, the, the most, uh, you know, uh, what's that 
Taylor Green Marge Taylor Green. Uh, this, this is this level. So you're reading shit like this, and you're saying nobody can be fundamentally this fucking clueless. So it has to be satire. So apparently we have a brand new writer on Medium.com, although this was originally originally published in the New Climate. The New Climate that Helena Wizenga, who prefers to be called Ellie, Ellie Wizenga, she is this cute little bubbly young blonde, uh, has written her very first uh, essay for Medium.com after running it in the new climate. And we're going to welcome Ellie Wizenga as the greatest satirist I have ever encountered in three years of being on Medium.com. Take it away, Ellie. How Moms, How Moms, otherwise known, is how breeders, how breeders are at the forefront of climate action. Yes. So uh, we have a picture of Ellie and her little bouncing bundle of joy. Take it away, Ellie. I am a new mom, meaning Ellie is a new breeder. I'm a new mom whose son just turning one. If I thought I was a good multitasker before, let me tell you, it's a whole new ball game now. Most mornings you'll find me dressing my son, coffee in hand, shut up, okay. Um, let's uh, get on with it, uh, Ellie. Okay. And due to climate change, the weight of what moms are juggling has grown heavier. It's not just the wildfires and floods we see on the news. The constant barrage of daily choices, the constant barrage of daily choices, meaning lifestyle and consumer choices, can feel like little battles in the war for a sustainable future, says the proud new Mom, I see it in my own life every day, yes, between figuring out, <laughs> between, between figuring out which eco-friendly detergent actually works and coordinating my son's clothing rental. I have become all too familiar with the dance of minimizing our family's footprint. When I look at my son, blah, 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 I, I find the extra fight in myself to make sustainable choices. Yes, and I know I'm not alone. Moms, meaning, meaning, Breeders everywhere, breeders everywhere are leading the charge against climate change. Yes. Okay. Here are a few ways moms, meaning breeders, looking for ways. Okay. E e e you know. I, I'm assuming that before this clueless moron or this or, 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 or this top-rate satirist, whichever one she is, before she became a breeder, she wasn't completely uneducated on her consumer and lifestyle choices she could make to lessen her footprint on the planet. So she looks at the choices and she decides to breed, and then she starts 
looking for eco-friendly detergents that actually work to, to wash her son's rented clothing. Here are a few ways moms are pushing for a green future. Hmm. Reducing household waste. One effective way moms, including me, are stepping up for the environment is by utilizing kids' clothes, clothing rentals. This approach reduces textile waste and cuts down on the resources needed for production. Now, of course, she does not mention that a child who is never born will never need one ounce of material for clothing, but from clothing to number two, reducing food waste through strategies like meal planning, creatively repurposing leftovers, and smart grocery shopping. Moms ensure that less food ends up in the trash. Yes. By making small changes at homes, moms are helping to address this large-scale environmental issue. And then, of course, being more intentional about the products they bring into their homes. Moms, meaning breeders, are choosing sustainable, sustainable and eco-friendly options. Yes, with more families opting for locally sourced organic goods. These mindful choices reduce the demand for harmful chemicals such as pesticides and fertilizers while promoting cleaner air and water. By selecting eco-conscious products, moms make daily decisions that contribute to a healthier planet for future generations. Yes, and don't forget advocacy. Mothers on the front lines, you, you know, of, of climate and, e and, and eco action. Breeders on the front lines of ways to save the planet. Yes, okay, but the activism does not stop within the home. While making eco-friendly choices at home is crucial, many breeders are taking their commitment to the environment even further by becoming advocates for climate action. Organizations like Moms Clean Air Force and Mothers Out Front consist of passionate mothers urging policymakers to take substantial measures against climate change, you know, like sterilizing the human race so some clueless fucking moron uh, doesn't bring another goddamn human onto this planet. Jesus, you know, this shit, this can't be real. Uh, for instance, Mom's Clean Air Force played a significant role in advocating for the Clean Power Plan, which aimed to reduce carbon emissions from power plants. Yes. The moms leading the charge in advocacy are not lifelong activists. They're women like me, balancing a passion for the environment with the craziness of family life. Yes. And then she goes and, and goes through this list of moms. Uh, I've heard of this one, Mary Ann Hitt. Mary Ann Hitt, the former director of the Sierra Club's Beyond Coal campaign, contributed to the retirement of over 300 coal plants. 
her activism is not separate from her role as a mother. Yes, instead it's intertwined. Hit often shares how her desire for a livable planet for her daughter fuels her work, advocating for a transition to clean energy while navigating the demands of parenthood. Show Hit, like many other moms, bridges these personal and political. These women show you that you don't need to choose between motherhood and activism. You can do both. There you go. Oh, God. How about from organizing neighborhood cleanups to hosting sustainable living workshops. There you go. Uh, and of course, one of mom's most impactful roles in the fight against climate change is educating our kids, the next generation of leaders, by instilling sustainability, by instilling sustainability and environmental stewardship values in our children, moms ensure that the fight against climate change continues. And of course, uh, don't forget about recycling. Teaching kids about recycling is one of the simplest yet most effective methods to impart these values. I grew up without much talk of sustainability but these ways, but these days it, meaning sustainability, is woven into everything I try and do with my son. This early education lays the foundation for lifelong sustainable habits. Don't forget picking up litter. Uh, off the beach and all of that. Uh, and then she goes through uh, a another list of moms saving the planet. Uh, by creating businesses rooted in sustainability, these moms are empowering families to make better choices. Yes. And it is together towards a greener future. Why the battle against climate change is a collective effort. Moms are undeniably at the front lines track tackling the issue from multiple angles. Yes. Adding climate change to the mix can seem like another burden, but it can also be an opportunity to be seen and for our innovations and learnings to make a difference for others. Whether managing waste at home advocating for cleaner policies or raising eco-conscious kids, moms, meaning breeders, are at the forefront of the climate movement. And we have 268 claps for Ellie and we have 10 comments. Let's hear some comments. I'm so touched with this writing. It's clearly and emotionally explains how moms are vulnerable yet empowered to climate change. It's also inspired me for what I can do when I become a mom in the future. Unbelievably, Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles did not reply to that comment. Here is I'm much in the same boat as you. This is Lisa. I'm a first-time mom to a 15-month-old. 
Yes, and the first thing I think is, how do I best reduce waste while having a baby? Why don't you reduce waste by not having a baby? Just thinking out of, uh, thinking out of the box here, lady. Uh, and of course, every comment is from a woman. Real feelings expressed. Uh, here is Safika. It's inspiring to see how moms are leading the charge in climate action. Their dedication to protecting the planet for future generations is a powerful example of the difference that we can all make. Yes. Uh, a couple more women. And then we have commenter number 10 with no claps. This is a fellow named Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles. <clears throat> I honestly do not know if this was the single most brilliant piece of satire I have ever read on medium.com or if this is the single most comment rejected for violating the terms and conditions of the medium community. Oh God. All you can do is, all you can do is laugh at these clueless fucking moron breeders. All you can do is have a sick, twisted, dark, ironic laugh at, 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 at these clueless fucking morons like this bimbo, this eco bimbo. I think we have a new term for the collapse, eco bimbo. But anyway, since I have fully binged on Graham Hancock, I have to go over to Netflix, assuming I can get on with the way my day's been going. Figure out what to do with my last Sunday night at Bugs in a Jar Farm. What do you think, little dog? He goes, why don't you go to bed? Ugh. Bye, guys. It was truly disturbing. <sighs> Fuck.